If you want to live a long and healthy life, stick around for a couple of minutes because the information that I'm about to give you is crucial. I'm going to give you some information that can help you drastically lower your risk of cancer, heart disease, osteoporosis, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, and much more. Oh, I forgot to mention kidney stones. If you've suffered from kidney stones, this can be beneficial also for, for uh, lowering your risk of getting them again. I'm going to tell you how to get this substance into your body and how much to take and why. It's vitamin K. Now let me get one thing out of the way from the very start. The term vitamin K does not refer to a specific vitamin, it refers to a category of vitamins. Vitamin K1 has a role in the blood clotting mechanism. And that's all it does. Uh, that's important. And that's the one you need to avoid if uh, you are taking blood thinners. And you can get vitamin K1 from dark green leafy vegetables, which you should be eating plenty of anyway. But in this video, I want to talk about vitamin K2. Um, apparently, at least 80% of the population, 80% of people, in our society are deficient in vitamin K2. And that's one of the reasons why there's so many degenerative diseases. You often hear the recommendation to take vitamin D and, and hopefully whoever recommends that will specify that it needs to be vitamin D3. Doctors will recommend D3 uh, for patients in order to help avoid osteoporosis and for the immune system. For the heart, D3 has a lot of roles in the body and it's crucially important. However, I have made the statement in the past that you should not take vitamin D3 without taking vitamin K2 and it needs to be the right form of vitamin K2 uh, because I believe vitamin D3 can actually be harmful if, if taken uh, when there is insufficient vitamin K2 in the body. Now when I say that, I always get a lot of criticism People say that's not true, it's old science. That's what they always say, of course, about our, our science. But here's the point. It doesn't matter because you need to be getting sufficient amounts of vitamin K2 in your body anyway. And you need to be getting sufficient amounts of vitamin D3. But you need to know how, what ratio. Very briefly, let me give you my, my reasoning. One of the things that vitamin D3 does is to mobilize calcium in the body. Now I've done videos in the past on calcium and how dangerous it can be, how harmful it can be. Calcium needs to stay in the bones where it belongs. You start getting calcium in other places and you've got problems and we see that a lot. Uh, the arteries calcify, the soft different soft tissues calcify, glands and organs get too much calcium in them, muscles, joint spaces, etc. You don't want that. Uh, vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 work in partnership. D3 mobilizes calcium. Vitamin K2 makes sure it goes into the bones. So what vitamin K2 is doing for you in partnership with vitamin D3 is what everybody thinks calcium does and it doesn't. When everybody thinks that taking calcium supplements is going to help with bone health and it won't. Um, and I, in fact, I just uh, finished doing a very extensive article on that uh, in my newsletter. And by the way, my newsletter is up and running now, and I'll give you information at the end of this video to tell you how, how to go there. But uh, you can read that article and it will explain a lot more about why calcium supplements can be dangerous. But that's not the subject of this video. In addition to guiding the calcium into the bones where it belongs. Vitamin K2 actually can help remove the calcium, excess calcium, from soft tissues where it doesn't belong. That's a very good thing. Vitamin K2 also activates many of the other benefits of vitamin D3. So you've been told now for years that you need to be taking vitamin D3. Well, if you want to get all the benefits from vitamin D3, take K2 as well, or better yet, eat foods that are high in K2, and I'm going to give you a list of those foods in a minute. 
One of the very important benefits of vitamin K2 is that it can help keep the arteries clear, keep them from calcifying. And, and of course, that's a huge thing. That uh, benefits in many ways, including the avoidance of heart attacks and strokes. Based on the research that I've done on this subject, uh, it appears that if you don't eat grass-fed foods and fermented foods, you're probably deficient in vitamin K2. And when we see all these degenerative diseases in our society, there are multiple causes for that, and I have discussed other causes. Uh, seed oils, sugar, magnesium deficiency, so on and so forth. But uh, a big factor in this is the deficiency in K2 because uh, prior to say 100 years ago, 150 years ago, people used to eat a lot of the right kinds of fermented foods and grass-fed foods. That was the, the dairy products they consumed and, and the meat they consumed was grass-fed, period. And of course, organic and didn't have all the chemicals in it. And they didn't have refrigerators. So one of the ways that they preserved food was through fermentation, which provides uh, numerous other health benefits in addition to uh, high amounts of K2. Here is a list of some of the foods that have vitamin K2 in them. Certain types of cheeses like Gouda and Brie, but don't think that eating those would be enough. You'd have to eat a lot of those to get enough vitamin K2. Goose pate, which I've never tried, but I intend to. I don't know how, what it, how it tastes or even how hard it is to come by, but it has a lot of vitamin K2. Uh, NATO which is a fermented soy product, and that's the only way I recommend consuming soy is, is fermented soy products. Otherwise, I don't believe in putting soy in the body. But NATO apparently has the highest concentration of vitamin K2. Uh, butter, but it needs to be grass-fed butter, has a lot of it. Egg yolks, and I've talked about how healthy eggs are, and don't worry about the cholesterol. That's a myth that, that eating egg yolks is gonna cause cholesterol elevations fermented vegetables again. And as with all other nutrients, it's best to get this uh, vitamin from our foods. But if you supplement K2, you need to know how to supplement enough of it. A good recommendation is if you are taking vitamin D3, which you should be, you should be taking 100 micrograms of K2 for every thousand IUs of vitamin D3 that you take. 